Yar, and welcome to Factaganda. Um, today, as you might have guessed, we're going to be going over some parts of the scientific method. Yeah, um, I'm really loving this new desktop share feature that I've discovered. Um, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of it, I'm sure. So that's me way down in the corner here. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to be going over burden of proof. And that's, uh, that's why we tie in with the scientific method here. Um, the question is, is uh, we keep hearing about this burden of proof and, and why, uh, why is it that people keep asking for it, basically? Um, so uh, when we're talking about uh, you know, evolution versus uh, creationism, it's because creationism doesn't have any proof. They, you know, basically everything comes up to God did it. <laughs> So, um, huh. burden of proof, um, you know, for most people starts with their kids, you know, you got the, the neighborhood kids in the yard and they say, Ooh, Hey, look, um, there's, uh, there's 10 bucks in that hole in the tree. All you gotta do is reach your hand in and get it. Well, the burden of proof is on them you know you're not the one who's expected to just reach your hand in and get it or you know look in it that they have to say hey look there it is all you have to do is get it i'm just too scared to reach in myself you know and as soon as that happens you know you kind of got to start laughing at them and um and in a in the scientific world um it's kind of the same thing kind of works the same way. I could, for example, uh, hypothesize, and that's, uh, that's number four there, um, I could hypothesize that, um, you know, there is a, a small pink unicorn inside the left nostril of each person who has been awake for more than two and a half hours. Um, now, something like that is easy enough to check. You just find somebody who's been awake for three hours, and you look up their nostril. Um, and usually at that point, there's a, ah, gotcha, you know, kind of thing waiting around the, the bend. Um, so, you know, when we talk about scientific theories, uh, like, for example, I actually have a couple of my own. I don't know if they're part of the main scientific flow or not. Um, but I think one of the factors causing the universe to speed up in its expansion is in fact uh, momentum drift from the light being emitted by all these stars. Um, the momentum, um, light has almost no mass, okay? Otherwise, we'd be you know getting jostled around all the time, um, and there's a, a contraption for explore, you know exploring the universe called a solar sail, uh, and basically what you do is you build something like a mylar sail about the size of a football yard, uh, stadium, and you stick it on a tiny little lightweight um, uh, uh, ship, and you know send it kind of towards the sun and so that it reaches one of those trajectories where it goes out and around and then as it's moving away from the sun all of the light rays hitting that sail uh, which you know there's not a lot of them but they all have a little bit of momentum and close to the sun there is an awful lot of, of light tremendous amount of light trust me um, and it will then push the sail away the same way that you know wind pushes a sail here on earth um, now that momentum you know has to be uh, uh, you know has to be uh, part of of, uh, of each light ray that that moves on and our uh, our sun you know is always pushing these out every other sun every other star is also pushing these out so there is an incredible amount of pressure 
towards the outside of the universe when you add it all up. Now you might think that, okay, well, there's an equal amount of stars in all directions, and that's not entirely true. Um, there may be a point in the universe that's very close to the center of the universe where everything is kind of more or less equal, and that sun is just producing pressure on the outside. But when you get, you know, to like one side, near one edge of the universe, there's a lot more universe over there pushing than there's a universe over here pushing. And while the sky may look equally starred, all the way around, there is in fact a slight amount of pressure that way more than that way, or any other way. Um, so, and that's causing the universal expansion in every direction. Now, the thing is, is I have absolutely no proof to this. Um, the burden of proof is on me. I can't just say this and, and expect everyone to follow it. I, I don't even know where to say it, to be honest with you. But um, before it becomes part of science, I or other people have to go through the scientific method involved with this. Okay, so I have, I have proposed um, my issue. You know, uh, in in this. Um, Oh, sorry, up there, <laughs> uh, under the scientific method, the, the purpose is, you know, state the problem. We don't know what dark energy is, okay? Research, well, we didn't quite do that. But we've come up with a hypothesis about the uh, impact of light on other objects. Um, and the hypothesis is, has already been predicted. And um, so the experiment is, is that we already know that light... Uh, does this, but it's going to be a tricky experiment to verify that the Earth or you know galaxies or whatever are being pushed around by this amount of light. This is where often mathematics comes into play. You take the total number of stars in any given galaxy and the total number of galaxies that we're aware of, and you know you start applying really big numbers to really small amounts of momentum. And that's where it goes on and about. I don't have that kind of math on me. Um, I lifted my other pants. Um, so I'm probably going to have to talk to a mathematician or, you know, somebody like, uh, you know, Neil Tyson, who's, who's good with uh, astrolo uh, astronomy, um, and, uh, you know, get together with them and see what they think about the idea and see if we can work the math out. And if we can be proven mathematically, then we analyze the data and come to our conclusion that it is or is not one of or the only factor in that expansion. Um, but again, all of that proof is on me. I can't just say, hey, I came up with this idea and you all need to follow it now. Okay, we need some sort of experimental proof. Okay, um, and this is how science applies to everything in science. Okay, um, it's totally acceptable for people to have opinions, but it is not considered scientifically true or accurate or theory um, unless. It has gone through the method of researching, experimentation, and conclusion based on your data or math. Um, so, you know, when we when we talk about things like um, homeopathy, okay, the burden of proof we say is on them. They make some really wild claims but they don't ever manage to produce any solid data that meets scientific rigor. Um, same thing for creationism and a lot of the other things that you don't know, like that, that you hear about. Um, so that is hopefully a good enough explanation of burden of proof and how these things work. Alrighty, have a good one.